Thanks so much for staying with us here on the AM report. The ANC's elective conference is expected to boost Gauteng's economy by over 250 million rand. That conference will be held at Nazareth from tomorrow until next Tuesday and is expected to host over 5,000 delegates from all over the country. So for more on this economic boost for the province, we're joined this morning in studio by the MEC uh, for Economic Development, Tasneem Mutara. Tasneem, it's great to see you. Thanks very much for coming in. Thanks for having me. Who can say no to a quarter of a billion rand boost? No, definitely we can't, especially under tough economic times. December is a quiet period for yeah. Gauteng, usually, especially from the 15th. Uh, many of the businesses are closing. Um, today, schools have closed. Uh, holiday makers make their way to their holiday destinations. Others return home. Yeah. So for us, um, it's really a great opportunity. It's the diehards that are still in the province after the 15th of December. Um, the diehards and those with uh, not many options. Yeah. No, absolutely. Yes. I mean, the 250 million rand that's projected to be made from this conference in Gauteng over the weekend, we've got a lot of issues in the province that could do with that kind of money. Yes, definitely. I think for us, um, you know, we want to be able to take the economy, firstly, back to a pre-COVID period. That's going to assist us in boosting revenue um, because, you know, that um, without revenue, without any income, we're very, very constrained in terms of what we can do. As a province, we do have few um, revenue-generating streams. Uh, more gen revenue-generating streams, streams are actually found in municipalities. But we do, um, as you know, we've got a debt which we need to cover now as the Gauteng um, process is underway. Sorry, the um, Gauteng Freeway Improvement right, Project right. is underway. So it's a debt that we've incurred. We've got to be able to look at um, creative ways of generating and increasing our revenue to be able to just offset those debts which we didn't necessarily foresee. Mm. Where are those revenue streams coming from? Uh, well, a, a lot of it has already been spent, uh, not the majority. So many of the, um, so for instance, the facilities, etc., accommodation, um, transport, many delegates are starting to come into the province from today because the conference will start tomorrow. Um, so it's accommodation, transport, um, some retail, um, definitely food and beverage, um, and then some recreation that will take mm. place. So conference will run during the days. Of course, it does tend to end late over certain days, especially when there's voting periods. Um, but by and large, uh, people will be able to leave the conference venue, go out, um, experience uh, Gauteng. Mm. For many, many people, especially um, you know, younger ones, it could be, it could be very well be their first visit mm. to Gauteng. Mm. Um, others who are veterans of um, F the, you know, the conference scene in the African National Congress will not be for the first time here. We hosted the policy conference not long ago. Uh, we hosted the national conference five years ago. Um, but for many, it will be the first. Uh, we also, of course, will look at auxiliary services. So the financial services sector might support um, emergency services, right. might support as well. So there are those opportunities also just in the medical space, um, not to the great extent. And we're hoping not, um, not, not, not very big spending there, but there are definitely opportunities. Of course, those who are not um, delegates who are coming to do other business, um, for instance, media support, et cetera, et cetera, will also be accommodated, um, you know, we've got international media, um, we've got local media, but not only Gauteng based. Um, so we are looking at just the entire hospitality value mm. chain that's going to really be boosted over the next six days. I mean, when we talk about MEC, where the money can be spent in Gauteng, that list is, is almost endless, isn't it? Definitely. Just, just, the, just the state of, you know, we talk about a world-class African mm. city, and that conversation or that phrase um, means very little. People who live in the province will tell you it means that we have gone backwards. We've taken several steps backwards. I mean, how far do you reckon we are away from that statement of Gauteng and Johannesburg, a world-class African city? Look, I think, um, you know, in all honesty, we have um, regressed quite a lot. A uh, big part of it is um, ESCOM and the fact that uh, we don't have security of energy supply. Mm. That then poses a lot of other uh, consequences and risks on business, as an example. Um, so some businesses have not been able to um, withstand COVID. Yeah. Uh, they would have closed during COVID. 
And I think in the current um, situation, especially with the, with the electricity and the energy supply, SMMEs are, are really, really having a tough time. Um, we've, in terms of the world-class African city, look, I think um, comparatively um, in Africa, we're still, um, we're still one of the, the destinations of choice, Gauteng. Um, we still do have world-class facilities, Nazareth mm -hmm. being yeah. one. Yeah. Um, thankfully, Nazareth has not degenerated and withstood, um, even during COVID, we used it as provincial government. So we were able just to keep it, uh, assist in keeping it afloat. But I'm hoping that over and above that the African National Congress Conference this weekend is going to look at how we respond to those challenges to be able to restore uh, investor confidence, restore um, the, the ability of SMMEs to be able to survive, do business, and of course bigger businesses to be able to, to, to do business because if they're not doing business, yeah. um, they there's, are, no money. there's no money, there's yeah. no economy, um, we have shedding jobs, etc., etc., and it's just... Um, a snowball effect on the entire yeah. economy. But I mean, you know, drive down any Johannesburg road, the, the traffic lights will be out if they're not lying on the floor. The potholes are just everywhere. It's, it's a hazard driving on Johannesburg's roads because, if you, especially if you don't have insurance, if you lose a tyre, that's thousands of rands. You talk about Johannesburg as a world-class African city compared to others mm -hmm. on the continent. I, I mean, can I disagree with you there and say that yeah. we're actually not comparable anymore? In, in what country... Is it impossible to have a nightlife in the city centre? But it is here in Gauteng, in Johannesburg. Yes, you're quite right. I think, you know, a lot of, um, as you would have heard, even the Premier speaking about some of our priorities, one, uh, the, one of the big reasons why we can't have a nightlife is security issues. Yeah. Just the fact that it's unsafe. Um, it has become incredibly unsafe in, in Gauteng especially. Um, you have an underbelly in, in Gauteng, um, you know, a... a, a a crime and criminal underbelly in Gauteng that we've not experienced for many, many years. Um, you know, it's owing to, one, uh, poverty levels, desperation, unemployment. And if we don't respond to those, that mm. underbelly of crime is going to grow. Um, if we don't respond, like I say, to the, to the security um, of, 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 of energy supply, mm. that crisis is going to um, go over into others. I think um, definitely our infrastructure is taking strain. Um, we would have seen even with the floods um, this week, over the past two weeks, some of our road infrastructure just collapsing, yeah. um, the state of that. I think for us, importantly, is we've got to work with municipalities. Municipalities are not in good shape, not yeah. even um, the metros now, sadly. It's not just a situation of districts and local municipalities, but even metro municipalities. Um, I think we've got to look at the model of the municipality, its capacity to really generate an income. Um, and without growing the economy base of a municipality, that income generation is, is not going to be, to be seen. Mm. Um, we've got, I think the provincial government does have um, very, very ambitious plans to be able to intervene in municipalities where we can. Um, so we would have done quite a lot, especially in the south. We want to intensify that. Um, because without direct intervention from provincial government, um, those municipalities will really, really not be able to survive on their yeah, own. Yeah. I mean, the World Health Organization talks about, you know, in 2023, mm -hmm. we will hopefully be completely out of the COVID-19 yes. pandemic, right? So that doesn't become um, a reason anymore mm -hmm. for where we are e economically. Do you have, MEC, um, a plan for the next five to ten years of where you want to see the city going? So um, maybe not the city specific, but the province. Um, we are on a huge investment drive uh, for, to bring uh, both international, mo mo mainly international investors and big local investors into the province. Uh, we're using the model of the special economic zones. Mm -hmm. uh, a huge one is quite successful, the Tswani econ special economic zone. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's housing Ford Motor Company with um, eight subsidiaries that are really just built just to supply Ford currently. But of course, in the future, um, they, you know, if they've ramped up capacity, which we're assisting them to do, they will be able to supply more than just Ford to South Africa. Uh, we're in talks with um, a, a number of international, um, international companies, some USA-based, um, and we're looking to bring them into the country um, quite early next year. The SEZs, the Special Economic Zones, um, in, in, in Johannesburg, we're looking to finalize the Lanseria one. Right. In the Val, it's the Val SEZ, um, the river, Val River SEZ. And in the West End, um, we're also looking to, like I say, 
outside of direct provincial in government intervention in mm. those municipalities, nothing's going to happen. Mm. Um, the Gauteng, what we call the Gauteng IDZ, which is the Oartambo precinct, has now really stabilized. Um, you know, you can drive up there at any time. You see a lot of investment in the logistics space, a lot of investment um, in just bringing businesses into that space just to support what is known as the Eritropolis, which is the city built around an airport. Um, but I think um, very, very soon um, we'll also be speaking about some of the, some of the tourism numbers, some of the um, deals that we've been able to successfully close. Um, for instance, um, we, we've closed a deal with um, German airline traveling from, from Germany to South Africa uh, through OR Tambo. We're looking at um, just expanding that, notwithstanding the challenges um, of the, the local carrier, mm. um, which is definitely something that I know the Minister of Tourism is taking up. But the fact is that those reduced numbers of flights between um, Johannesburg and Cape Town are also a negative contributor and unless we resolve um, a, a lot of problems with our SOEs which mm. are supposed to be cushioning us um, economically we're also going to struggle yeah. um, of course within every crisis there's always an opportunity so if SAA can't do it um, there's an opportunity for somebody else to do it and we are looking for those somebody else's mm. it, it's not a, an easy question to answer mm. how do we get Hao Cheng back on track because there are so many different facets of what feeds into that, right? You've talked about security of energy supply, which is a huge one if we're talking about international investment, the security issues, safety and security in the province as well, um, poverty and inequality, the state of our healthcare system, and the list goes on and on. If you were to put it in a list of priorities that, that you want to tackle as MEC, how would you rank those? I think for me um, is investor confidence. So, so components that make investors decide yes or no. Yeah. Um, so security, energy, energy security, uh, physical security, yeah, yeah. as well as, um, as just government support. So uh, on the energy side, we're looking now as Gauteng to not rely on ESCOM no longer. Um, so rolling out uh, microgrids, um, which will support the SEZs, but also the, the surrounding communities. Um, that's our direct response. We're also looking at what we can do in direct response to the water, um, water, possible water crisis that we do face, notwithstanding the fact that we have torrential rains now, um, but um, we've got to do water harvesting. So mm -hmm. those are the two direct that we're looking at. And then the second is, um, you know, a, a huge one that the Premier has been speaking about is the rollout of our response to safety and security. Mm. Um, so it's the increase in the number of, um, of just feet on the ground. Um, you know, that, that contributes very positively to creating a safe environment, working very, very strongly with the private sector, the private security industry, because they do have resources that government may not necessarily have, but we can leverage on each other. And then thirdly, um, is just to be able to, to respond adequately to different sectors, as opposed to having a blanket approach, because different sectors need different things. Yeah. Um, so if we, if we want to be able to address and intervene adequately and er accurately, is to listen to what um, the various sectors say, and then address it in that fashion. We are doing it with the Ford Motor Company. Um, I think closer to the time we'll be able to speak about some of the concrete things that we're doing, which will take Ford uh, beyond 2030 um, and staying in South Africa just for manufacturing. Yep. Of course, the next big question is who replaces Andre Dorator? I hope somebody who's got uh, guts and foresight, because I think um, ESCOM, with all its problems, needs, um, needs foresight. It needs somebody who has, is bold enough to take the bull by its horns and really tackle the issues one by one. Mm. I think um, uh, we, we're sitting in a very unfair situation where we hear lots of stories. Uh, so one day it's sabotage, the next day it's um, you know, issues with coal supply, um, corruption, etc., etc. So we've got to be able to get somebody who has got, um, you know, will get to have us all understand mm. what are the real problems with ESCOM and what needs to be done to resolve them. Um, I think currently we're on quite a, on a fishing expedition. Nobody seems to know exactly what is the problem with ESCOM. You hear every day different, and it depends who you listen to. Um, even with ESCOM management, with ESCOM staff, it depends who you listen to. Mm. That's what you'll get as the version of what is really um, the situation. Mm. But I think um, state support, definitely, and um, just somebody who is bold, knowledgeable, um, but has foresight. Yeah. Um, we do need the SOE. We do need to be able to supply 
energy to, to South Africans. It's, it's, it's a constitutional imperative. Mm. Um, but we need a SOE that is fit for purpose, equal to the task, um, and can do the work that it could do in its heydays. Yeah. I wonder who this bold person is with all of this foresight. We have to find that person. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we have to. Tasni Mutara is the MEC for Economic Development here in Gauteng. MEC, thanks very much indeed. My thanks. For coming Thank into you. the studio.